I was thinking about this. I was watching Jim Harbaugh and his team struggle yesterday and lose to Alabama. 35-16. That's the fourth straight loss in a bowl game for Harbaugh and Michigan. Now, you can say you're disappointed that Jim Harbaugh has yet to beat Ohio State. You, you can say they're a disappointment against top 10 teams. 2-11. 0-5 against Ohio State. Consider this. He's 47-18 and 18 overall. In the previous seven years, under Rich Rodriguez and Brady Hoke, they were 46 and 42. Pretty amazing, right? Since 2000, Michigan has seven double digit win seasons. Since 2000, that's 20 years. 20 years. Harbaugh has three of them in the last five years. And you may take Saban or Dabo, Lincoln Riley, over Jim Harbaugh, but you can't get Dabo or Saban, or Lincoln Riley to coach Michigan. If you want to point to what is missing, what's the missing link? It's the same missing link that everybody has. Do you think Dabo Sweeney is a good coach? I do. I really do. I don't think he's a good coach. I think he's a terrific coach. And I don't think he had the better team if you go back to the national semifinals, I mean, I really believe that, um, that, you know, because of injury, now you have a running back for Ohio state who I felt like, and maybe just me, I felt like he was the best player in the field. I know Travis Etienne was outstanding. You look at his yards per touch and you could just kind of be blown away. But I felt like Ohio state uh, had, has a tremendous quarterback. I don't think anybody's arguing that. He's the former number one overall prospect. But I also think that they were just, they had the best player on the field at running back. But but if you look at, at Dabo Sweeney's coaching record, right? And you remember that Dabo Sweeney has a chance if they win the national championship. They'll have won three national championships in four years. M- maybe more impressively, Remember, they, they played in two straight college football championships. So they're appearing in their fourth championship game in five years. I mean, utter and sheer dominance. He and Nick Saban are the elite of all elite. Okay, but let's go back for a second. When Dabo Sweeney took over, first he was an interim, interim coach, and then he went 9-5 and five and 6-7 and seven and 10-4. and four. Kyle Parker was his quarterback. Then he had Taj Boyd as his quarterback. And the peak of Taj Boyd was a win in the Orange Bowl after two years previously being beaten in the Orange Bowl. They got all the way up to being ranked third at one point in time and finished the season ranked eighth in the country. But there was a ceiling. Then they got Deshaun Watson. And they play for two national championships and win one. And what I think people forget is what happened in between last year's national championship and Deshaun Watson's national championship. Did Dabo Sweeney change? No. Did the defense coordinator change? No. What happened? Kelly Bryant was their quarterback. Kelly Bryant was a highly rated prospect. He's a talented guy. They ranked number one in the country. They lost to Syracuse and lost to Alabama in, uh, in the Sugar Bowl. Why? Because Kelly Bryant's ceiling was just lower. Look, a great quarterback has elevated Mac Brown. Right? Mac Brown was doing a tremendous job at Texas. But there was a ceiling. Nine wins, nine wins, nine wins. Eleven wins, but the Holiday Bowl. Eleven wins, but the Cotton Bowl. Ten wins, but the Holiday Bowl. When they won the National Championship, who was his quarterback? Vince Young. When they went back to the National Championship, he had Colt McCoy. Two pro quarterbacks. We see this in, bas- in, in in basketball all the time. Rick Barnes, a friend of mine. Go back and look. Rick Barnes' two most successful teams wasn't because he had Kevin Durant. When he had DJ Augustine and when he had TJ Ford. Two NBA point guards. Otherwise, there's just a ceiling. You can only take a team so far. And I know you're saying, hey, how many quarterbacks has Nick Saban gone through? Their overall depth of talent, the way in which their teams are built, Nick Saban's way is the exception, whereas Dabo Sweeney, Jim Harbaugh, 
Mac Brown, that's the norm. Shea Patterson's a good player. But remember, when he transferred in, it was from Ole Miss. It wasn't like he transferred in from Georgia, from Alabama. You know, he wasn't a, wasn't a top five quarterback in the country. Nor is he a top five prospect in the NFL draft. You go back and look at when Jim Harbaugh was at Stanford. He turned the thing around from not winning a game the year before he got there to leaving it as a BCS, uh, BCS bowl team. They didn't become elite until he added Andrew Luck. You can't tell me that a guy can make Josh Johnson a new NFL quarterback, Andrew Luck into that type, type of refined quarterback, be the only guy to be able to fix Alex Smith and then uh, make Colin Kaepernick work. Colin Kaepernick did not have success when Jim Harbaugh wasn't his coach. Period. Stop. End of story. Like, look, his quarterbacks have been Jake Ruddock, Wilton Spate, and John O'Corn before Shea Patterson. Shea Patterson's an upgrade over the previous three, and their record has reflected as much with 19 wins over the past two years. But there's a ceiling there. Just like there was a ceiling with Taj Boyd. Just like there was a ceiling with, with all the other Clemson quarterbacks before you got to Deshaun Watson. Same thing happened to Texas. And you can tell me, I mean, I love Chris Sims to death, and I actually think he's a better pro quarterback than he was college quarterback. But once they added Vince Young, who's one of the great college players of all time, it was, it was like a different sport. So is it okay to be disappointed? Sure. Is it okay to say, hey, man, we got to beat Ohio State? Sure. But remember, he came in the league. Penn State was already starting to roll with Bill O'Brien and then James Franklin. As opposed to the previous regimes, Penn State was at the end of the Joe Paterno era, and then they went through probation. Michigan State was already rolling. Ohio State, national power for 20 years over. Through Jim Trestle into Urban Meyer, two of the greatest coaches in the history of the sport, and with unbelievable recruiting uh, a depth of talent, They're spread across the country. Their national name. They were the one team, the Big Ten, that could go head up with teams in the South, and they went and did that. Harbaugh had to plug leaks in his staff. He had to turn it into a national recruiting program. He had to get some exceptions. He had, in terms of academic admissions, you know, he had to modernize their strength and training, strength and conditioning program. And he's done all of those things, and he's made them competitive at the top of the league. In the last two years, stomping out Michigan State. Before this year, beating Penn State. Obviously, they had beaten Wisconsin before losing to them this year. And they're yet to climb the mountain and beat Ohio State. That's not any different than Dabo Sweeney. When Dabo got to Clemson as the interim head coach, Miami had been rolling. Florida State, obviously great for 30 years. You know, Virginia Tech. And they survived new challengers like Louisville when they won the national championship. But it took them a while before they could get to the level of a Florida state. And ultimately they've now vanquished Florida state. That's, that's not the case with Michigan. Michigan has to be great while Ohio state is greater. That's a lot harder than what Clemson has to go through. But my point is there's some similarities there between Dabo, who is much more likable nationally than Harbaugh in terms of his growth. And Dabo has never coached nor won anywhere else. Harbaugh has. So either Harbaugh forgot everything he knew about making great quarterbacks or Shea Patterson and Jake Ruddick and Wilton Spate and John O'Corn just aren't that good. And once they get a guy that is that good, you'll see them beat Ohio State. You'll see them win the big bowl games. Maybe the story should be that Alabama should have been playing for a national championship. Hell, they're still a missed field goal away from, from being in the national semifinals or being in the discussion. I'm not going to sit here and defend Harbaugh's record against Ohio State, but no one thought they had the better team. No one thought they had the better quarterback. No one thought they had the better athletes. Like J.K. Dobbins is an elite running back. The quarterback was the number one rated prospect in the country. Ohio State's I'm talking about. They were supposed to lose that game. And they did. Do ultimately you want to see a win over Ohio State? Yes. Big bowl game wins? Yes. But tell me somebody who's immediately going to change it so much and no one has ever changed it that much without the great quarterback play. 
Hey, what up? Doug Gottlieb here. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel here at Fox Sports Radio. You can catch my show, all the shows on Fox Sports Radio, unique interviews, strong takes, uh, just interesting discussion on the sports topic of the day, of the week, of the month. It's all encompassing. It's everything you need right here on YouTube. Subscribe.